Algebra tours. We are going to go over the homework. I'm going to go over the homework. I'm going to do it rather quickly and you can rewind it as needed. So let's start. We're going to start with lesson 52 because I think that's where we started. We have quite a few. That's why I wrote yikes on that. So let's see how quickly we can get through these and still make it clear. So I love mixture problems. We have a couple of those from lesson 52. So the first one is the practice problem. So if I just set these up and don't go the whole way through, I think that will be helpful, right? So a chemist has one solution that's 25% salt. So right away we have our, we're going to do buckets. So I call these bucket problems even though they're not really buckets. So bucket, bucket, and a bucket, right? Okay, the percents go underneath. A chemist has one solution that's 25% salt and 75% water. Just stick with either salt or water. Another solution that's 5% salt, so we're going to put that underneath. How many milliliters of each should the chemist use to make 1,600 milliliters of a solution that's 15% salt? So underneath here are all your percentages. So there's percentages, no decimal points needed because we're basically moving them all over. So that's okay. Um, we don't know how much of this. This is the first type of mixture problems where we don't know either amount. There's going to be another kind of mixture problems coming up. Um, we're going to make the total amount is going to be 1,600. Okay, so all you're going to do for these is you're going to do two equations because you have two variables, which means you need two equations. These are like the coin problems. So this is kind of your milliliters, your liquid amount, whatever's in the buckets. So you're going to set it up x plus y equals 1600. You just do across the top all the buckets. And the second one is you're going to multiply the percent by the amount in the bucket, the percent by the amount in the bucket, the percent by the amount in the bucket. So just to save time, I'm not going to solve this, but maybe what I would su suggest you do is multiply the top and bottom by negative 5, and then eliminate the y's, and then go back and get the x's. So that's how you set up a mixture problem. All right, let's go to number 2. Number 2 is another mixture problem, but I'm going to do that for you because these are new. So he has, here we go, we have buckets, bucket, bucket, and equals bucket. Okay. So we have a chemist has one solution that's 25% salt underneath the buckets, 75% um, water. You don't use, you could do this all with water. You would have to subtract the other ones from 100% to get the water. 5% um, salt. These are, this is like identical, isn't it? To make a 10% salt solution. We don't know X, we don't know Y, but we know how much is in the final amount, which is 1,400. So we just do two equations, what's in the buckets, and then the percent times what's in the buckets, like this, equals 10 times 1,400. And again, I'd probably multiply the top, top one by negative 5, eliminate the y's, and then go and find the x. All right, they were identical. All right, so let's go on to number 8. Number eight, ooh, imaginary numbers, how fun. Okay, so we have the square root of negative 16 minus two i squared minus two i. All right, so the square root of a negative number is gonna give you, if I have the square root of negative one, it's going to give us i. So 16 is the same, negative 16 is the same as negative one times 16. So the square root of 16 is four, the square root of negative one would be i. So we popped our i out. That's always fun to say. Okay, if we squared both sides of this, look, if we squared both sides of it, we would get that i squared equals negative one. So wherever we have an i squared, we're gonna put a negative one. So it's gonna be negative two times negative one, and then it's gonna be minus two i, nothing you can do with that one. This is a little messy, my, ink, my pen is a little bit too fat right now. So it's 4i plus 2 minus 2i. You want to put it in the form of a plus bi, where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part, bi. So we're going to put the real part first, which is going to be 2, and then we add our two imaginaries, so we're going to subtract them, and we get plus 2i. And there you go. That's kind of fun, right? Okay, let me just fix my pen, and we'll go back in one sec. Gets a little bit too thick. That looks better. Okay. 
All right, the next one, moving right along, we're on number 10. Solve by completing the square. I noticed that every lesson has one of these, so I'll do a couple of them. I might not do all of them. So the number 10 is 2x plus 5 equals x squared, and the directions say solve by completing the square. This is quadratic, so you should know any time you have quadratic, the highest exponent is 2. That's how you know it's quadratic. You need to set it equal to 0. We want to keep the coefficient of the squared term positive. So we're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 5, such as that. Okay, we set it equal to 0. You could try to factor it, but it's just not going to factor. Plus, it says you have to do it by completing the square. Um, you could try, you know, all the factoring things, but 5 times 1, 5 and 1 can never give you 2. So we're going to do it by completing the square. So the way you do that is, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, whoops, I did not mean to do that. So we have x squared um, minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. I just wanted to switch them around, which is totally legal, because if you have a seesaw and it's balanced and you switch the people, it still stays balanced. So that's all we did there. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to do what's called completing the square. That 5 is not a good number. It's not a perfect square. It's not the right number. So we're going to toss it over to the other side by adding it to both sides. And then we need to find a replacement guy for the negative 5. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So how do we find this replacement guy? Well, we take the number in front of the x. That's 2. We divide it by 2, and then we square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. Now, if we were to factor this, we would get x minus 1 times x minus 1. But um, we want to rewrite it in a different form. We could write that as x minus 1 quantity squared. So we're going to do that. We made a perfect square trinomial. That's what this is called. Um, so we can write that as x minus 1 quantity squared equals 6. The reason we do that is because we can solve equations like this by taking the square root of both sides. So we're going to take the square root of this side. We have to do the plus or minus square root of this side because if you took the square root, um, 3 squared is 9 and negative 3 squared is 9, so there's going to be two answers to square root problems. So when you square a, take the square root of a square, you get what's underneath it. So you get x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. And then we're going to add 1 to both sides, so you get x equals 1, plus or minus the square root of 6. You're always going to get two answers because it's quadratic. Whatever the exponent is is how many solutions you should get. So that's how you solve this, completing the square. You can see the number is, the answer is irrational. So you couldn't have done that by factoring. Okay, hopefully you got that. You can rewatch it if you got, if I went too fast. All right, we're on number 12 now. Find the equation of a line. I do these every single week. I'm trying not to be, um, whatever, <laughs> bitter about this. So you need to find the place where it crosses the grid line in almost all of these. Well, there's a couple different points on this one. So it crosses the grid line. There's a spot right here. So I'm looking where it crosses where the grid lines are. And it looks like to me a 3, negative 2 looks like one of the points. 3, negative 2. And let's see if we can find another one. Um, there's a couple of them. This one, this one crosses several grid lines in my mind. So let's try 5, 2. So up here is a point 5, 2. There's also a point at 6, 4, and at negative 1, or 1, negative 6. So you identify any two points where it crosses the grid line. Then you find the slope. You can either count rise over run, or you can do the slope formula. You can count up. Look, we're going to count from negative 2 to positive 2, so it's going to be 4. And then from 3 to 5, it's going to be 2. So our slope is going to be 4 over 2. Or we can use the formula, which is y2, or I just did y1, whatever, minus the other y coordinate. Just make sure you do it in the same order. We're going to start with the 5 minus the 3. And look what we're going to get, 4 over 2. So our slope is 2. So we get our slope is 2. Now the problem is it might not match the answer in the back of the book exactly, and that's okay. You just want to be close to it. All right, now we find our b. So we take one of the points, doesn't matter which one, and we put it into our y equals mx plus b form. Um, we use the 2 for the y because this is our x, this is our y. 
So we get 2 equals 2 times 5 plus b, and that's going to be 10. I'm going to subtract it. 2 minus 10 is going to be b equals negative 8. Look on your picture. Does that look where it's going to look on in the book? Does that look where it's going to cross the y-axis? I do believe it's true. If you get something like positive 8, no, the line does not cross the y-axis of positive 8. Then finally, you write your equation of a line. So you write y equals your slope that you found is 2. And we put our x and y back in. That stands for the infinite number of points that are on a line, minus 8. And this is your equation of a line that kind of um, is, that e is that equation right there. There's that line. All right. Onward. Number 18. That was 12. Let's do 18. Okay, our fun radicals. You know, hopefully this will be the time when all the light bulbs turn on for you. Okay, so whether that 3 is a big 3 or on the C, it's a big 3. And then we have our 9, and we have the 4th root of 3. So we're going to take the radicals out and add the fractional exponents. The 2, this is square root, so it's a 2 there, they don't write it, is on, on the seat, so it goes on the bottom. We're going to write the bases the same. So 9 can be written as 3 squared, and this is going to be 3 to the 1 fourth power. You can either multiply your exponents first or do what's inside first. I'm going to do what's inside first. I'm going to add the exponents. So it's going to be 3 to the 9 fourths um, to the 1 half power. And then I'm going to get 3. Oh, I can see where you got stuff on this one. And this is going to be um, 3 to the 9 eighths. And now they're level, so we're going to add them. So this would be 8 eighths and 9 eighths, so it would be 3 to the 17, 17 eighths. All right, if I didn't make any mistakes on that, that is what you should get. All right, that was a little tricky because we usually don't have this kind of thing going on. But once you get there, you need to add your exponents because the bases are the same. Okay, the next one, 26. Oh, great, I get to draw a picture. Okay, all right, so this one is a circle. This is 26, 26, a circle. We have some triangles in here. So let's see if I can draw them somewhat looking like the book. Good luck to me on that, right? But it's still easier than doing it on the whiteboard. All right, here we go. All right, so we have to find x, y, and p. So I need to squeeze those little letters in here. So this is y, p, uh, 100. Oh, that's nice. They give us something, 100. And then we have x, and we have z. Ooh, lots of letters. Uh, and finally, we have this distance from here to here is 60 degrees. All right, so we have to go find all the pieces. First thing I'm going to do is get p which is down here. I can barely read my own letters. This is a Y. Okay, so P. This angle P comes down here and it intersects this arc. This is an inscribed angle because its point is on the circle and it intercepts this arc. P is half of the intercepted arc. So P is going to be 30. Now we can get Y. If we know P is 30, and we know that the triangles, all the degrees of a triangle is 180. This is 130. 180 minus 130 is 50, so y is going to be 50. All right, let's pop over to the other side. Z is going to be the same thing because, look, it comes up here. It intercepts the same arc. So Z is going to be half of 60, which is 30. Uh, this is going to be 100. These are vertical angles. Vertical angles are equal. And it's going to be the same thing. Guess that. Well, guess that works out, doesn't it? Um, so these are similar triangles because their degrees are all the same. Um, so we have this is 30, 100, 130 from 180 would leave us with P. That's not P. We already have P. Um, X is going to equal 50 as well. Degrees, 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 degrees. Okay, 26. Onward, last one, 28. The nemesis of all time. Really important concept, though. Find the equation of a line that passes through the point negative 2, negative 7, and it's parallel to the line 2x plus 3y. 
equals 4. If it's parallel, it's going to have the same slope. You can't look at this and see the slope. You can't see the slope unless it's in the form y equals mx plus b. And then you can look at it and say, oh, there's the slope. So you have to solve this guy for y. So we get 3y, subtract 2x from both sides, plus 4, and then we're going to divide everything by 3 and we get 4 thirds. Now, if it's parallel, it's going to have the same slope. So now we know our m. This is similar to the one I did a little bit ago where we had to find the equation of a line. So we have our m is negative 2 thirds. If they ask us for a perpendicular, which they don't, you would do the negative reciprocal. But this one's parallel. Parallel slope is negative 2 thirds. If you're going to do a perpendicular, this is a symbol for perpendicular, it would be positive 3 halves. It's a negative reciprocal. But they ask for parallel. So now we can take our point. That's the point of the point. We have the x and the y. We write down our friend y equals mx plus b. We fill in the y with our point. It's negative 7. Our m that we found by putting in its slope intercept form. The x which is negative 2. And we find our b. Running out of room. So we're going to get negative 7 equals 4 thirds plus b. And we have to subtract 4 thirds. So this would be 7 is the same as negative 21 thirds. So it's going to be negative 25 thirds equals b. So we have m and b, that's our goal. And then we put the y in and the x. And we add our slope, negative 2 thirds x minus 25 thirds. And that's the equation of a line that's parallel to this line, which means it has the same slope, but goes through this point. All right, we did a lesson. Yay. Okay. Onward. Let's do um, lesson. Which one are we on now? We are on lesson 53. Not as many problems. Did I miss any? Um, five must have been added since I did this. So five Let's start with 5. Looks like I forgot that one. So 5. Lesson 53, 5. Is this distance? Yes, because Chad asks for a distance problem every time. Go, Chad. Thanks for asking. An automobile was traveling at 50 kilometers per miles per hour and had already gone 200 miles when the airplane set out in pursuit. If the airplane overtook the automobile in 4 hours, what was the speed of the airplane? Okay, I'll get this set up for you. So he was traveling. He had already gone 200 miles. So he had already gone 200 miles. So that's our 200. And this was the automobile, so distance automobile. And then here goes the distance of a airplane. So we'll call that P for plane. So our little setup will be 200 plus the distance of the automobile equals the distance of the plane. Now we can, we're going to um, factor these out. Distance equals rate times time. And the distance of the plane is rate of the plane, time of the plane. Can we find anything out? Well, we know the, the, the um, rate of the automobile was 50. Um, and we know that it took four, four hours. That's a little bit tricky. It says if the airplane overtook the automobile in four hours. So it's starting. The automobile was here, the plane was here when they started, so the time of the airplane is for the time of the, um, that's automobile, <laughs> the time of the plane is for as well. So you're just going to plug these all in and then you're going to find the rate of the plane. So you're going to get 200 plus rate of the automobile was 50, time of the automobile was 4, uh, rate of the plane we don't know. And the time of the plane is 4. I'm going to pop that in front. And then you can solve it from there. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's. we're going to get 200 to a 400. So it's going to be the rate of plane is 100. OK, so you can finish that up, Chad. I think you got it from there. OK, all right, back to our regularly scheduled problems. Number 13, we're going to start getting some reruns, it looks like. OK. So number 13 is 2i cubed minus i to the fourth plus 3i squared. All right, so we know that i squared, you have to just kind of memorize this as negative 1. So this is the same thing as i squared times i. And this is the same as i squared times i squared. 
and of course this is just i squared. So every place there's an i squared, we're going to put the negative 1. So this is going to be 2 times negative 1, which would be negative 2i. This is a negative 1 times a negative 1 is going to be a positive 1, but we have this negative, so it's going to be a negative 1. And then it's going to be minus 3, because i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Put the real part first, so it's going to be negative 4, these two, minus 2i. 13. All right, number 15. As I said, I feel like we're doing the lesson over again, but that's all right, because these are new concepts. Okay, 15. Negative x squared equals negative 6x plus 6. All right. This is by completing the square. You want your coefficient of your squared term to be positive, so I'm going to um, just pop this on the other side. I don't do that. It's We're adding it to both sides. And I'm going to set this equal. I like to rewrite it like this. Um, blank equals, I'm going to pop this on the other side, negative 6 plus blank. I just like to do my 0 over here. And then we move that over. All right, divide. We're going to take the term, the coefficient of the x term, divide it by 2, and we're going to square it. Makes the perfect guy for this to make a perfect square trinomial. So we get 6 divided by 2. So we take this term, divide it by 2, and square it. It's 9. You add it to both sides. You made a perfect square trinomial. So it would be x minus 3 times x minus 3, but we write it as x minus 3 squared equals 3. Then to get the x out of there, we take the square root of this, and you have to take the plus or minus square root of this because there's two answers. And so we get x minus 3. The square root cancels this, basically. And we get plus or minus the square root of 3. And then we just add 3 to both sides. So x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 3. And you have two answers. You have the plus answer and you have 3 minus the square root of 3. All right, onward. We are on, let's see, 21. Let's see, did I do 15? Yeah, 21. All right, number 21 is a fun one here. So it's the fifth root of x squared y cubed, and it's times the cube root of xy squared. So we're going to make these fractional exponents instead of radicals. So it's going to be x squared y to the third to the one-fifth power. And this is going to be x, y, woo, my pen got a little out of control. y squared to the one-half power, one-third power, because it's a three. All right, then we're going to multiply. It's a power to a power, so we multiply. So we get x to the two-fifths y to the three-fifths, x to the one-third, y to the two-thirds. Sometimes when the internet's bad in my house, the pen doesn't work good. Okay, so that's a y. Then once you have it, I call this all level, When then you're going to add the exponents on the x's, the exponents on the y's, and you have to not add fractions, or you can use your calculator. We talked about that in class, I think, right? So let's do that. So it's going to be 2. I'm going to put these into 15 so I'm just going to do it by hand. So it's 6 15 and this is going to be 5 15 and that's going to be 11 15 And then we have, let's do these into 15 So that's going to be 9 15 And this into 15 is going to be 10 15 5 15 2. So it's going to be 19 15 Hopefully I added my fractions, right? And that is how you do this. So you do, you put them as fractional exponents, then you multiply power, power to power. Um, make sure that you get the little one there. So you multiply that and then add the exponents on the x's, add the exponents on the y. Alrighty, that was 21. Next is, make sure I'm in the right lesson, 23. Okay, 23 is quite the long problem. As I do this, I'm going to separate it. So I'm going to get 3 square root of 2 over the square root of 9. Um, 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 um. The square root of 9 is actually 3. 
Uh, weather, let's just put it as three. I don't know which is the easiest way, but it's hard to resist taking the square root of nine and not making it three. Minus two, the square root of nine, which is three, I'm just gonna put the three, over the square root of two. And this one has to be rationalized because we still have the radical in the denominator. Minus, now the square root of 50, if we did the tree, it would be 25 times two, and that'd be five times five, bring the five out, and we're left with the two. So I simplified that a bit. All right, so now we're gonna get three root two over three minus six root two over two minus 10 root two. And the common denominator here is a six. Right, so this one needs a two, so two times this and two times this, so it's six root two. This needs a three, so this needs a three minus 18 root two. This one needs the entire six, six, right? One times six, so it's gonna be minus 60 root two. Look at how they're all root twos. And we need to then add these all up, so we're gonna get, um, negative 12 minus 60 is negative 72 root two over six. We can definitely reduce this, right? Um, six goes into 72 12 times, I do believe. And so we're gonna get negative 12 root two. I didn't check my answer, I hope that's right. Okay, so that's the concept. A little bit tricky, a little bit different because we have the square root of 9, which is 3. You don't have to leave the square root of 9 or rationalize it like that. Okay, last one in this lesson, which is um, 27. Okay, 27. Ooh, yay. Okay, another fairly long problem. I'm going to, right from the get-go, separate my triangles. I do not have visual ability, so I have to separate my things and compensate for my weaknesses. So I separated my triangles. Um, might need a calculator for this one. Five, um, what, never mind. This is the big triangle, so it's gonna be both of those added together, which would be 10. And the little triangle over here, we have five C A, and we have a 12 and A plus B right here. Okay, um, this triangle, you can see, you can see possibly, like if I compare these, the, the ratio is going to be the same. These are similar triangles, which means the sides are proportional. You know they're similar because they both have, they have two angles of this one are congruent to two angles of this one. So our ratio is two times the little one equals the bigger one. It doesn't always happen like that, but this one's pretty clear cut. So that means that C has to equal six because it has to be half of this one. Then I'm gonna do the Pythagorean theorem on the smaller numbers to get A. I could do them with 10 squared plus 12 squared equals A plus B, but I'm gonna use the smaller numbers plus because we need A anyway. So we're gonna get five squared plus six squared equals a squared. So it's 25 and 36, which would be um, 61. So a squared is going to equal 61. So a is going to equal the square root of 61. Now, usually we do plus or minus, but we're talking distance, so we don't wanna have a negative distance, right? So a is going to equal the square root of 61, and how do we find a times a plus b? Well, the ratio is this triangle is twice as big as this triangle, so a plus b um, is going to be, oh, we need to find b as a matter of fact. Okay, so a plus b is going to be 2 times the square root of 61, right? So if we're going to find out b, it's going to be 2 times the square root of 61 minus a, which is the square root of 61. And so it's going to be the square root of 61. Okay. Um, this is going to be b. Interesting. All right, let me know if I got that one wrong tomorrow, if anyone watches this. 
All right, let's go on to, um, we did 27. We are on the next lesson. Lesson 54, number four. All right, the ratio, a ratio problem. So we're on 54, number four, the ratio of ducks to geese. So I always do ducks to geese, ratio of ducks to geese was five to four. Um, four times the number of ducks, four times the number of ducks was 40 greater than three times the number of geese. So I made two equations because we have two unknowns and then we're just gonna do a substitution problem. I'm not sure what I'm gonna substitute yet. Oh, this makes sense. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to get 4D equals 5G. And 4D is here and here, so we can just substitute this in for the 4D. So we get 3G plus 40 equals 5G. This one just kind of worked out nicely. You could have done it different ways. This is definitely the easier way. So you get 40 equals 2G, and the number of geese is 20. And then if you figure out the number of ducks, you would just take, um, you would just substitute the 20 in for the G, so it'd be 100 divided by four would be the ducks would be 25. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, let's go on to 16. There's not many for this lesson. 16, another completing the square. Someone doesn't like these. All right, I'm gonna do it. X squared equals seven plus three X. All right, the, this one's positive, so I'm gonna move everything to the left. Keep that positive, minus three X plus seven equals zero, minus seven equals zero. All right, this one's a little trickier because of the um, odd number. So we take our X coefficient or X term which is, it doesn't matter if you do negative or positive because you're gonna square it, so it's gonna be, become, be going to become positive no matter what. Okay, so you get x squared minus three x plus who? Well, it's gonna be the coefficient divided by two squared, so it's gonna be nine fourths equals seven plus who? The same thing, nine fourths. We got some little messies going on here. So complete the square, x minus three halves, quantity squared. We need to add this, so that'd be seven times four is 28. I'm doing all this in my head today. 28 plus nine is 37, right? 28, nine, yeah, 37 fourths. And then we're gonna do the square root of both sides. So we get X minus three halves equals plus or minus the square root of 37 over two. And then finally, we have to add three halves to both sides. So we get x equals 3 halves plus or minus the square root of 37 over 2. All right, that's it for completing the square. Let's go down to get the next one. Um, the last one is 18. I don't know if I have the patience to do this one again, Ashley. <laughs> um, so you're going to find the two points. The same thing, like if you had to find two points, it's pretty clear cut when you look on that drawing. It looks like there's one at... So this is 18, so it looks like there's one at four, three, and one at six, zero. You're gonna do the slope formula, find the slope, then you're gonna put it in y equals mx plus b, and find, pick a point, put it in for, maybe I'd pick this point because of the zero, it kind of is cool. So you put the zero in there, the six in there, the slope in there, find the b, and then put the m and b in and leave the x and y in. All right. All right, last lesson, lesson 55, C. Okay, we didn't get a chance to go over these, so really good questions, guys. I saw that um, there's two of these. Uh, this is C. Find three consecutive integers such that the product of the first and the second. So always do your heading. First, x plus 1 equals the second x plus 2 equals the third, 3. Always do that heading. We did these before. Okay, so find three consecutive integers, the product of the first and the second. So we have our heading, so we know what the first and second are, is equal to the product of negative 6 and the third. So the third is x plus 2. Now the difference between these and the problems you've done in the past is these are going to be quadratic. See, we're going to have an x squared term, which makes it quadratic. 
equals negative 6 minus 12. So if it's quadratic, you set it equal to 0. These are going to be factorable. You're not going to have to complete the square to find the answers. Plus 6x um, plus x. So let's just make that 7x. We're going to add 6x to both sides. 7x plus 12 equals 0. You need to try to factor it equals 0. So we're going to get x plus 3, x plus 4. Set each of these baby things equal to 0. x plus 3 equals 0. x plus 4 equals 0. And you get x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 4. And then you want to finish out the process by finding the consecutive integers. Mm -hmm. So we would do, and I made more room in this page, so we would do our answers are negative 3, we are adding 1, negative 2 and negative 1 is one set of answers, and then the other set of answers would be negative 4, add 1, negative 3, add 1, negative 2. Okay, that was C. Let's move on to 5. Five, the same thing. So find three consecutive integers. So x equals the first, x plus one equals the second. Now if it was consecutive, even, or odd, you would be adding two each time. Third. Oh no, never mind. This is consecutive multiples of three. All right, I'm going to come back and do that one in class. Um, we'll pick up that one later because that one's different. Um, let's do number 17. So this is another one solved by completing the square. x squared, I'm going to set it all equal to 0. Minus 5 equals 0. Same idea, guys. x squared minus 5x plus blank equals 5 plus blank. Who goes in the blank? Divide it by 2 and square it. So it's going to be 25 over 4. Because 5 over 2 squared would be 25 over 4. We're going to add that to both sides. You should be getting the hang of these. These are kind of fun. Um, 5 over 2, really important concept. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus 25 is 45 over 4. And we're going to get x equals 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 45 over 2. This can be simplified. You can't leave it like that, unfortunately. So we're going to get x equals 5 halves, plus or minus, this would be 9 times 5, right? Square root of 9 is 3. 3 root 5 over 2. Okay, and I'll pick up that other one. I just need to think about it for a second, so I don't want to take time in the video. All right, so that is it. We'll see you in class tomorrow. Oh, if you watched this, you might have turned this off. Could you put your name on the help board that you watched it? That would be really helpful. Thanks. Takes me a minute to close these down.